amplify what is already within you. So chemical engineer, and then, and then like according to Pastor uh, Pastor Sanusi, what he said, so my job is pastoring and my work is oil and gas professional. Uh, I, I love my job. Um, I'm always happy being around around the, 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 the young ones. So because because I'm the pastor in charge of uh, EM uh, Yaya, and it's it's been well, over ten years now, and it's been at the excellent excellent part of my of my year. Again, the things that I've gained in in leading the youths in in in, in planning programs have been very very helpful in my career. I actually, for you, if, if you don't know, I actually put it on my CV. Uh, the thing that I do, planning the camp, raising funds, they are part of my CV when I was looking for, for, for jobs. So what do you do? I do this outside the job. When it came on the job, and they're talking about leadership development, I put it as part of my CV outside the job on top of the, the things I do in the office, these are the extra things. We gather 500 people together, had a conference, invite speaker, entrepreneurship, and all those say, wow, you have time to do all this? Yes, and it counts, it gives me credit. On the job, you know, so it's, it's been very, very helpful. So I look at the youth, and currently uh, I pastor together with my wife uh, the Real Boat Assembly here in Qatar. And so that's that's the part of me. And then I'm the oil and gas professional over 20 years in the industry, and you will see that the progression in the in the next slide. I've worked, I've worked across the, the globe. Amen. Uh, so that you see is so I my, my core is my home, my my job. My job, I mean my work, and my profession, and, and, and what, what I studied. Those are the four corners that you see. And when it comes to my career journey, so I did chemical engineering, and then I started work. And in those days in Nigeria, you hardly see people doing, I mean, the jobs were not that plenty, but the banks were raining at that time. And so I applied for a job in the bank and I actually got into Standard Trust Bank of, of those is now UBA. And you wonder what, it, what is an engineer doing in a bank. But again, like I said, uh, what you study is, 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 is not as important as what your ability. Chemical engineering is process engineering. It's input into a box and then you have output. And as a chemical engineer, there is absolutely nothing you cannot do. Absolutely not any, whatever industry, even in medical, in, in medicine, we find application of chemical engineering. So you see chemical engineers working in medicine. So I'm advertising chemical engineering. If you are not yet studying, you are not yet done a course, go and do chemical engineering. It beats any other engineering field because it is the, is the broadest type of engineering you can do. In, including chemical engineering, you have management. With, I did financial management in school. I did, I did human, human resources management as a chemical engineer in school. That's part of the curriculum. You will only find that in, in, in chemical engineering. So I finished, I joined, the, I started off straight with the bank. I worked for some few months in the bank. Then I got to Conoy. And, and, and my, my dream has always been to work in an oil and gas industry. And so God answered my prayer. I was able to get to Conoy. I became a team lead. I was selling lubricants, industrial lubricants. Again, look at my personality. I said I love, I love meeting people. Pay attention to who you are at the core because most of the time it drives the kind of job you apply for. It drives the kind of thing you do. I, I'm not the kind of person that sits in the office and do nothing. I love going out and meeting people. So very easily, I got the lubricant sales job. I was the team head. I was doing. I was going around Portacourt, Wari, Bini, selling industrial lubricant. And when I was doing that, then I, I by God's grace, in 20, 2004, moved to Shell. Uh, Shell was looking for a, an engineer, a chemical and mechanical engineer with sales experience. So in my interview, I told them, look, I have been in the bank. I was selling financial products. I have been selling lubricants. All I need to do is to change my financial product and lubricants to gas. And you have the person you are looking for. Everybody loved. I got the job. And that's how I got into, in, into Shell. And again, what drives me, whatever you do, do it with the whole of your mind. I put in my best. And before I was even confirmed on the job, within a year, I was asked to go abroad. So I got cross-posting and then I moved to the Netherlands. And that's where I put consolidation. And that is where I did a lot of things. I volunteered for so many things. I was still young. I was still interested. Volunteer for things. Be driven. Uh, go beyond your, your day job and show that you are interested in things. I was an economist. I was a commercial analyst. I was a business developer. I worked on LNG or GTL. Somebody is on leave. They need an, a spare hand. I volunteered to go for it. And, and I did all 
those things, you know, just to just to consolidate my skills. And then I moved between 2010 and 2017 is what I call doing the real stuff. And, in, and it, this is where I really developed my core. And I, I, I went through every part of commercial in oil and gas industry. I did everything in oil and gas industry. So I did gas trading. I did business development, mergers and acquisitions, contracts and agreement. I was managing global portfolio. I was in the Netherlands. We moved to, the, to London. We came back to the Netherlands. And from the Netherlands and London, I was doing projects across the globe. In Africa, I was in, I was doing in Gabon, in Nigeria, in Benin, in Algeria. Uh, I was I was doing things in Middle East. I was focusing on Oman, or Brunei, Dubai, Iraq, Qatar, and then I was also doing Oceania. I was in Papua New Guinea. We're doing LNG. I was around the globe, but in Netherlands and in London. And, and what this thing helped me to do is look at my training: chemical engineer, business administration, people loving person. Those are the core skills you need for a successful commercial career in the oil and gas industry. I have the technical knowledge, I have the business knowledge, and I have the passion relationship because commercial is about relationships, it's about meeting people, convincing them, and letting them know, you know, try to win them over. Even in negotiation, it's all about appeal. It's all about being able to talk to people and convince them that they, what you are saying is the right thing. So by ingredient, and then with coupled with what I do with the youth and, and trying to integrate people, just played very well into my commercial skills. And by 2017, the only thing I was missing in my portfolio of commercial of commercial in oil and gas was, was managing, was doing governance, uh, which is you have an asset and you are managing it. And that's what I went to do in Nigeria. Again, very important to have mentors. My mentor told me, Wale, you, you've ticked all the dots, but you need to own an asset and actually be the main person that holds this asset and focus on it. The best place you will get this in Shell is Nigeria. Go to Nigeria and do it. After spending almost 12 years in Netherlands and London doing various things, I moved to Nigeria to do uh, deep water. So I became the asset commercial lead for all Shell portfolio, deep water portfolio in Nigeria. And that was what I was doing. It excellent, excellent career, excellent, excellent role. That was what I was doing till 2019. When if I have a friend that, that we work together in the Netherlands, again, be mindful of your friends. What do you do with friendship? Do you keep your friendship and how good you are to them determines whether they will remember you or not. My friend in 1919, I saw a job on Qatar Petroleum. They were looking for senior specialists in oil commercial. That's exactly what I've done. That's what I was doing for sure. So I, I, I called my friend, hey, Hernan, I saw this position and I think you work in Qatar Petroleum. He said, yes, it's available. But there's actually another one also available, a uh, specialist for LNG commercial. I think you should apply for both. I said, okay, fine. So I applied for both. And as God will have it, I, I, I got the role. And so currently now I'm in, in Qatar based in Doha. And what I do is joint venture management. So we make sure that the Qatar government gets what they deserve from their joint venture. We are managing 14 LNG trains. And then where there's a new LNG plant we want to build in, in the US, it's called Golden Pass LNG. And I am the I'm one of the board advisors. So I advise the board on commercial decisions that needs to be made in executing that project. That is my my career journey. It's I've tried to summarize 20 years in, in few in, in few minutes. It's been interesting, and I, I love what I do. I enjoy it. It and when you when you are doing what you love, it is it's not a stress, it's not a burden. I can do it all day. I can do it all night. And with my motor in life, whatever you find your hand doing, do it with the whole of your mind. When I'm with the youth or I'm, I'm in church, I do it as if that is all I have to do. When I'm with my family, I enjoy them as if that is all that is about me. And when I'm at work, it's like there is nothing else that I need to do but work. And when you apply those principles, you see yourself succeeding. So don't, if you, in case you are still in school and you don't know what you want to do in life, uh, focus on your core. What is what do I love doing and what is what am I all about? And that would dictate the kind of thing that we apply for or the kind of things that we come yeah. to you. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. Pastor Wale, that, that was loaded. Thank you so much. You did, you did very well managing um all all your 20 years and more of experience into 
two, three minutes. Thank you so much for that. Wow. And I would join you to advertise chemical engineering. So if you have not studied, uh, chosen any course, you can choose chemical engineer, engineering because I'm also a chemical engineer by training. <laughs> that, that's just on the lighter side. Exactly. <laughs> and he has an MBA too. So he's on the good part. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so much like Pastor Wally. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being like you when I grow older. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sir. That that was very very powerful. Now before we go to the next panelist on the on the on the um, team tonight on the panel tonight that's uh, this afternoon rather uh, bro Friday, please. And it's loaded. I'm sure if you're already on the call or on the in the conference right now, you you already been blessed. Now please. Invite your friends. You can quickly do a WhatsApp message, send a link to somebody, to send it somewhere to your friend, to a family member to join. It's loaded. We're going to start taking questions very soon. We want to ensure that you can ask questions. Now, if you notice, we are going through different fields, sectors. All the panelists are selected specially to address different fields. We, we have Bro Peter from IT. We have Dr. Maya Oku from the medical line, Pastor Wally from the oil and gas industry, and different sectors like that. So it's loaded. You you definitely find a space. You find your place. All right. So invite your friends as we go to the next panelist, uh, Bro Friday. Please two minutes. I know it's loaded. It's loaded, but please just try so that we can have more time for questions sir. so over to you bro friday thank you very much and welcome everyone it's a privilege it's a privilege to be on this panel today to share with everyone of us about uh, my career journey uh, on this career development uh, session uh, for me if you ask me what is that important message that i should send across to everyone that is listening to us today i will just simply put it in uh, two words, no limits. And I will tell you that just briefly. I said no limit. Um, just let me quickly go through my uh, academic background to give you an overview of what uh, I have done academically or the trainings I have done. Well, I started my higher education training uh, in, the, uh, in the Lagos State University, where I studied fisheries and aquatic biology. And after that, I worked briefly for a year and five months with the United Nations uh, University Institute of Environment and Human Security. And that actually bumped up in me that a desire to, to go and study more about the environment. And afterwards, I started studying the impact of contaminant fluxes from different environmental uh, compartments and how they affect human health and uh, the, uh, I mean, the ecosystem generally. So with that, I moved to the University of Lagos, where I had my master's degree in environmental toxicology and pollution management. Well, afterwards, uh, I moved to Europe where I studied, uh, where I had a double master's degree in environmental management and water and coastal management from the University of Bologna in Italy and the University of Cardiff, Spain, respectively. And um, after my master's degree, I felt there was a need because my uh, passion is actually to go into more research and provide data that will help to safeguard uh, the human population from uh, different contaminants that have the potential to, to threaten our well-being. So I move ahead in, uh, into my PhD where I'm working on ecotoxicology, that is studying the impact of contaminants still. And by the grace of God, uh, I've spent, uh, during my PhD, I've spent uh, some months in the United States at the University of Southern Mississippi as a visiting uh, PhD student, where I worked on um, uh, molecular toxicology. And you may want to know, how did I start? And how was I able to come this far? I would like to tell you that I had it very rough at the beginning. Um, well, I lost my dad at the age of 11, and I had to grow up quickly. And that means I have to do uh, some jobs after school just to be able to take myself through uh, secondary school with my mom's support. 
And after that, uh, I, I, when I finished secondary school, I, I picked up teaching jobs alongside, I started to do photography. And it may interest you to know that the photography paid my first year school fees. And luckily for me, with hard work uh, in school, I got the university scholarship uh, to, I mean, in my school then, if you have a certain uh, a CGPA, you are awarded as a university scholar with your school fees returned to you and some stipends for your, uh, for your books. I got that in my second year. And just at the end of first year, I applied for Share Scholarship as Share Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, and I got it. Praise God. And uh, at the end of second year, I saw another scholarship from MTM Fund, uh, uh, Foundation. I applied for it. I got it. That was how I was able to do my schooling in Nigeria uh, for my first degree. And for my uh, Europe educational journey, where God helped me, I applied for the Erasmus Moody Scholarship for my master's, and I got it. And for my PhD as well, I had the Erasmus Research uh, State Grant which enabled me to do all these things I have done. I think during question and answer time on how to assess scholarship, I will be providing some insight that will help those out there who may want to know how, I mean, especially if you are financially challenged and you are, you are allowing that to hinder you from moving forward. I'm going to be sharing with us how you can assess different scholarship opportunities to be able to uh, move your career forward in, in life. God bless you and bye for now. I'll come back to pick some questions on that later. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so, so much. Very, very important. No limits. Please don't forget that. No limits. We'll come back to you very, very soon, sir. No limits. Please don't forget that, everybody. Just, just a very strong one to point out for, for you all watching us on YouTube or Facebook or on Zoom right now. One of the things you will see is that, you know, there's been this impression that people who serve God are people who don't do anything and all of that. But you can see that we have professionals. We are all professionals. You, you can be a professional, excellently doing well, and still serving God, all right? So please, this is one of the take home for, from this, this conference. You can be a six o'clock believer, heavenly focused, and very, very, very much earthly relevant, all right? So we're going straight to Sister Nonye, Two minutes, please. Thank you, bro, Friday, for that. That was good and on time. Two minutes. So, all speakers, please, two minutes. We already have questions coming in, so we can take them. All right? So, I know you over to you. All right. Thank you, Pastor Gaga. I promise to try to maintain to two minutes, because I'm even more excited about the question and answer. So, my name is Nonye, and I'm a vehicle system engineer. So, practically, it means that, in my own case, it just happens to be that I work, my day job is my hobby. And on the, I'll take you through the genesis of my career on the next slide. So one special gift my parents gave me, besides raising me up in a Christian background and also doing their best to give me the best education they can afford, was the mindset they instilled in each and every one of us, which was your career decision is simply based on your strengths and your interests and not about your gender. It has nothing to do about your gender. So if, you first, if you're a guy and you want to be a nurse, go for it. And if you're a lady and you want to be a pilot, let nothing stop you from doing that. But throughout my education study, one thing that I've always remembered is you can collect all the degrees you want, you can collect all the certificates you want, but if you don't turn them into a skill, you won't be relevant in the industry. And one skill that stood out for me was problem solving. My degree also helped me to be able to apply it in everyday situation in solving problems. And studying by, um, electrical and electronics engineering, I was able to, is it, Pastor Wallace said chemical engineering is the best degree. I, I am an advocate for electrical and electronics engineering is the best degree because today we're in the technology world and if you can combine, you can make the hardware talk to the software, you can do anything, whether in medical engineering or whether it's in the tech world. So yes, now if you're not sure, now you have two options, chemical engineering or electrical and electronics engineering. And the beauty of it is that I have been able to adapt to multiple in industry and multiple discipline just by making learning a lifestyle, continuously learning and acquiring new skills. Um, in terms of project management, 
project management aspect came, I realized that I had a gift in a natural field to see things from concept to the very end. And that came from serving in the youth conference. And I'll tell you a little more about how I've been able to apply it in the industry as well. And on the next one. My career started off in the oil and gas industry, purely of influence of my dad, who really wanted me to study petroleum, but had to give up the idea that she is her own woman and her own, she got her own mind and let me study electronics engineering because he was, it was evident that my pure strength was mathematics and physics. But in the oil and gas industry, I realized that I didn't really like the offshore as much. So, but I still like the energy sector. I still like being able to solve problems and see ideas come to life. So from there, I moved to the nanotechnology industry and eventually came back and did projects with Siemens for their offshore wind turbine. But deep down, I wanted to do things that on a Monday morning, I'll be excited to wake up and do it in terms of a job, not necessarily in terms of a work, my work. And that was in the automotive industry. After my master's, I moved on into the automotive industry, despite there was a waiting period, there was a period of unemployment, but I still waited on God. And I eventually got into the automotive industry and I worked with Jaguar Land Rover for their software department before moving on with Aston Martin as a vehicle system integration engineer. So basically I make the software really get to work with the hardware. But this, the car part, the oil and gas has been my job. My work has really been working with the youth and that has been to, since 2009 to present day. And by doing that, it has developed tech, uh, leadership skills, it has developed problem, um, problem solving and project management skills. And I, if I were to do things all over again, I'll make sure that my work will always be a priority because by, with my work, my work has given me the privileges that I never knew I could have in my job. And those were the, the drive and the skills I need to be a complete all-round engineer. I think that is um, all for me. So that I will leave the last slide uh, to the end because I think Sister Michael has talked a lot about purpose. And what, um, two things I would like you to take away if you don't take anything from me is your failure today is a blessing. Spend time, evaluate the lesson learned in that failure. And second, take ownership of whatever you do. Yes, there's nothing wrong with blowing your trumpet. Blow it with modesty and honesty and humility, but take ownership in what you do so that you don't find yourself in a boardroom and somebody is describing what you actually did because you didn't speak up to praise your own self. And always, always bet on yourself because only you can do what you can do. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sister Noni. I love the, the, the first line you started with, that your day job has now become your hobby. You know, it's, that's really very striking that every day you go to work, you're enjoying it, you know, like every other hobby. Thank you so much for that. So we'll take the last panel. If you already have any questions coming in, thank you so much for having the questions. If you've not, please, the chat room is already open. You can write in your questions and shortly we'll take them. So, bro, we, you have two minutes just for introduction. We'll come back with all the questions much later. Over to you, sir. Okay. Um, good morning, all. Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay. The next slide. Uh, Okay, um, my career started, uh, pre my career, I had a vision to be an engineer and it doesn't look like it, <laughs> but I really wanted to be an engineer. And I had a long battle with my dad for over a year or two. Uh, he wanted me to be an accountant and I wanted to be an engineer. And I felt I was not good as an accountant and I was really not good. But when I found myself doing accounting, I said, I have to make the best out of it. So I set a new target for myself, which was to be a chartered accountant before I left school. So I had to combine schooling and a lot of the things you see on the right, which are my internships, were internships in places I wanted to do because I said, okay, I want to be the best oil and gas accountant. So I refused to do internships anywhere other than oil and gas. And uh, that's how I started. And then I ended up working in different places, as you can see. Mainly, I wanted it to be oil and gas, and I wanted it to be international. So the only time I went to Citibank 
uh, it, I was tempted by money along the line. Uh, as a consultant, you don't have so much money as an uh, as a consultant to the firm. You don't have so much money. So I wanted to make a bit more money and there was temptation. Yes, I fell for the temptation, but I, I fell properly because it was also an international <laughs> firm. But within a year, most of these things you see on this page are things I did in within a year maximum. I was jumping jobs. Um, within a year, I already knew that um, I felt better moving out. So I, I switched jobs. So the next page, I ended up with Total. My first year in Total, my boss used to come to the office every day. He comes to my office and looks, say, ah, you are still there. That he thought, based on my profile, I would have run off to another job. So I started off as a reporting accountant. So let, let's take it as a journey as a farmer. So I was counting the yam at this time in the farm. Then uh, from there, I went to a budget analyst. I started studying how the yam was going. Then I became a joint venture coordinator because I had to use my study and my analysis to count the yam properly and make sure nothing got missing. Then I became a, a, a more of a, a venture um, management, setting up new accounts for new businesses for the, for the company, for small businesses. So I was setting it up and putting proper structures. Then I was now sent, um, I got a, an opportunity to move abroad. Uh, so I went to Paris. I was sitting at the head office. So I was like a financial consultant for smaller subsidiaries and affiliates whenever they had problems or they needed someone to temporarily replace somebody or they needed training in an area, whether it was treasury, whether it was accounting, whatever side of finance, I was like jack of all trades. And one of the most interesting times was doing disaster recovery for Libya, where I had to go to Tripoli like twice. That was after Gaddafi had been taken out and where people saw they were, there was like war. I remember going to the office and seeing two bullets uh, in the, my window. And well, it was part of, it was interesting to me. I took a photo of that uh, as a memorabilia. So the move to the next step. So uh, I was called back to Nigeria to come and take over as the tax manager. And one interesting thing about my different experiences was that I was not always getting the job I was looking for, but I was getting the job that was solving problems for the company. So when they could not find someone, they say, okay, I think this guy can do it. And my philosophy has not been to hang on and say, this is my calling, I must do what I like, but that here I am, send me. So, and that's the way I approached my service in church too. Uh, then I helped, um, as, um, I helped as a committee member by the side. So the two jobs you see on the left and right were doing, done at the same time. So I was managing uh, the staff cooperative. I started by helping the staff cooperative with um, advice on in a project committee for some of the real estate projects. Then later, people approached me to go for the position of the president. So I became the president of the staff cooperative. So I had to grow the business of the cooperative significantly by sitting and planning. And um, and we had to grow the business by 300. We grew the business within a short time by about 300%. And uh, we were able to set innovative uh, paths for our successors and uh, for every business, I always say that I start with thinking of 10 years time. I ask myself, where will this business be in 10 years time? And what we do today must affect who we expect to be in 10 years time. And in career, I ask people, where do you want to be in 15 years time? So you set up your path. And like Pastor Wally said, it's not always about where you start. Uh, God, just trust God and it will take you along the line. Next slide. Yes, um, because of my work in the cooperative, uh, I was seen as the, the cooperative, I was not being paid for that job. It was like a side job. Uh, my real job was the tax manager, but they, they needed uh, an investment manager and they wanted to Nigerianize the position. So uh, they looked for relevant experience within the system. Most of the experience was oil and gas. So the closest to financial services experience was what I was doing. And it did not seem to count for the daytime job, but that was the most significant experience that was required to become the first Nigerian chief uh, investment officer for our pension fund. Uh, so I took up the job 
and it was quite interesting because sometimes uh, you do not know who is watching you about the things you do at night. You think everyone only watches you in the daytime. But that was the only thing. that When I was doing my interviews for that job, that was the only thing that they asked me were the things I was not doing in my daytime job. So um, I did that. And uh, today we have grown the business. We've done a lot of diversification. And um, yeah, now we are not only growing more yams. Uh, we are now in a position to identify the customers to buy the yams. And we are in a position to identify if we should only grow yams or grow rice and cashew and other things. So, so that's how the business begins to evolve from yeah. just counting the yams. So what I would say is that, um, what I would say is that we, very few jobs um, are perfect at the start. Very few people get the perfect job at the beginning. And your job, is, what makes your career is a, is, a, is a combination of the task and the environment you find mm. yourself. You find mm. a good task in a bad environment or the other way around. That's it. And there are many talents that you will have along the line if you will just be calm and follow. Uh, because the Bible says the steps of the righteous mm. are ordered by God. So many things you will do that will become useful. When Moses was wandering in the wilderness, he did not know it's that same wilderness he will lead the people through. When he was carrying sheep, when he was using his rod to lead sheep, he did not know he would use his rod to part the Red Sea. So when I said I strayed into Citibank, I did not know that there would be some banking need in my in 15 years or, or almost 20 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Will be yeah. useful. Yeah. Uh-huh. So and do not overlook one of the things I tell people. Do not overlook your dream for your fantasy. There are certain things that you may like to do. I may like gardening does not mean I should be a gardener. It may mean that I should be a successful doctor like my Okun to be able to afford a big house that will have a garden at the back that I will now do the gardening. Uh-huh. Uh, some jobs love you, but some jobs, some jobs you love, but there are some jobs that love you. So be careful about your choices. Uh, it doesn't always start with what you want. Uh, we may... We may have to be diligent and patient to get what we really enjoy. And sometimes you make yourself enjoy what you find yourself doing rather than struggle to look for what you enjoy. And don't make your hobby, uh, don't confuse your hobby for your livelihood. And then finally, I would say the Bible says that, uh, the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That's what we always say in church. But when we say that, we should ask ourselves, can we really do all things? So um, a lot of times we say no to many things because we are not obeying the principle that we say we believe in. Joseph started as a houseboy, but he ended up in the palace. So your start wow. may not be sweet, but if you are diligent and obedient, you will reap. Do not be wow. wary well doing for in due season, you will reap if you finish. shall reap. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Oye. That was apt. That was so much on point. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences um, with us this afternoon. So we looked at so we have a from the IT world, from the oil industry that we have, and academic. So it, it's it's spread across different career paths. Now we already have any questions. I will go straight to the question because of time. But there's one question that really bothers me a lot, and it's coming from me now to one or two persons, and then we go to the questions on the on the on the chat that I can see already. You know, I've had this conversation with some person that say to me that oh, you have to go to school to to be a God plan for everybody. It's so tough there. You know, I'm sure and so there's no drive to want to get a degree, go to school. They feel that God will always make it happen for you. God will always lead your path and you will fulfill destiny even without going to school. They, they ask questions like, do you have to go to school to fulfill destiny? I'm going to throw this question uh, uh, to, to uh, Bro Friday, who is the academic in our midst, the, the one with the PhD. You know, what, what, what drove you to go that far? And what's your advice on people who have this mindset about education and fulfilling destiny? Please unmute your mic, please. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, 
<laughs> for me, it's just uh, the passion. Um, well, I got into school. Um, not, I mean, I didn't start reading the course I actually wanted to read. Let's get that clear. But in my second year in uni, I found something very interesting, which is the environment. And after graduation, I felt uh, this particular niche for me to be able to, because my vision was to work for the United Nations Environmental Program. And I felt I need more skills. So that drove me to do a little more, where I didn't actually set out to have um, many master's degree and PhD at the same time. I just wanted a master's degree and PhD, but it happens that at the time I applied for the scholarship and at the time I got the scholarship, I was already in a, a master's degree program in the University of Lagos. And I always wanted that European or uh, international touch to my training. So I couldn't let that go. And I have, in fact, I have to leave Nigeria to come to Europe and went back to finish the Nigerian uh, degree. So that was how everything happens that way. But the first line of this I really like to do more research. See, now, my wife, one of the things I'm always talking about is research. I am looking for research partners. I want to go into academies and research and be able to come up with data so one of the things that, you, that should drive you should be passion. What do you want to achieve, actually? I have found that there is a need here. Pastor Wale, uh, uh, Pastor Dikin Uyi, and um, uh, Noye, uh, they are working in the engineering sector, but the impact of that is affecting the environment so significantly that it comes back to hurt us. So we need to develop safe environment. So that's just my driving force. Let everybody have the money and, uh, and live in a safer environment and, and, and live to enjoy their money. So it's just that part of so. Thank you very much. I actually wanted you to speak, but I, maybe I would ask one other panelist to add to add to what you said. Thank you so much for that. You know, I also want you to speak to, I want somebody to speak to, to that, you know, that school of thought that you can fulfill destiny without going to a university, right? That, that's a school of thought, of thought out there. We have some people on, our, on, the, on the program oh. today. So I wanted to speak to that. Maybe you could say one or two lines about that and then I'd ask one other person to speak. Yes, I agree with you. You can fulfill destiny without going to school. But what exactly is the destiny you want to fulfill? For example, if you want to become a professor and that is your dream, you cannot fulfill that uh, destiny without going to school because there is a laid out rule for you to, I mean, to fulfill that destiny. Or if you want to become a musician, for example, and you feel you have the talent and you don't want to go to school, well, all be it, but there's something very important we must all know. Education has a way of refining our talents. Yes. A man said, that you can blow through a wooden pipe, but a silver pipe will give a, I mean, will give more quality sound than a woody pipe. So why not let that skip go through the fire of training, learning under people, so that when you come out, instead of just being an ordinary singer, you become a singer that the world wants to hear and listen to. Thank you so much. I love the word you used about education being a refiner of your thoughts. Thank you so much. Maybe Dr. Mayo Cook, you, because you, as a doctor, you, you spend a lot of time in school also. Can you speak to that in very few, just two minutes, please, or less? What do you say yeah, even, of that school of thoughts? Yeah, so even even less than even less than two minutes. Uh, exactly what um, Pastor Friday um, has been saying. There's certain when, once you discover what is the will of God for your life, then you will know whether you know it requires further education or not. But overall, what I'm going to say is that even if you're not, even if you know your destiny doesn't require you to to go to school, it still requires you to learn skills. Learning is a is a lifelong uh, is a lifelong uh, process. The way that, that that um, 
that is an um, engineer Noya spoke to us about. You need you need to refine. You need to refine. You know your knowledge. You need to be asking questions. You need to be refining your skills. How can you be a better version of yourself? So it doesn't have to be formal education, but you but you need to be learning lifelong. And somebody that is not learning, that is not improving themselves, they are basically dead. They are living cops walking basically. So as long as you keep learning, as long as you keep improving on the skills that you need to fulfill your destiny, you're good to go. Thank you so much, so much, so much information in that. So, Pastor Wale, I'll, I'll go over to you now, sir. There's a question for you, but I would like you to first of all balance all that this said about the school of thought, about schooling, you going to school and God's purpose for one's life and all that. I, I've heard you say something, something about that. Maybe you can repeat that, you know, to balance, you know, all of these thoughts. Some people don't have, didn't have the opportunity to, to go to university, you know, because their environment, maybe because of one thing or the other. What do you say to them? Now, you can combine that answer to the question that, that is sent by Brian. Or Raphael to you that uh, I'll just read it very straight. He says, and sorry, we it's so so amazing that we're already one hour <laughs> gone and it's like we just started. Please permit us to, to take as many questions as we can before we close this afternoon. Now the question is for Pastor Wally, I'm really motivated. This is Raphael speaking. I'm really motivated. I studied also chemical engineering, so I agree with all that you said. Also, I have an MBA and currently working for American Telecom. But my question is this, how can you develop into creating a business for yourself as a people person? What are the things to consider than when trying to build a brand for yourself? So Pastor Wale, can you combine these two questions and just answer them in two minutes, please? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so when you talked about uh, whether I need education to fulfill destiny, uh, honestly, honestly, my frank answer is everyone needs an education, irrespective of what you have chosen to do in the future. Uh, because what education does to you is that it refines your talent, as Pastor Friday said, but it also gives you credibility. Uh, it also gives you a backup. Uh, you, you know what you are talking And Just put two musicians together and see the quality of work from one that went to school and one that did not, that will always, always be different. Put two mm -hmm. pastors together. Look at the work of the pastor that went to school and the one that didn't go to school. There will be a difference. Whatever job you do in life requires one form of education or the other. It is only a lazy mentality that will say, I don't want to go to school because I don't need school. It's only really lazy. If you are not going to university, you are going to a training. You are going to a music school. You are going to a vocational training school. You must have one form of training because the society we live in now does not allow you to just have, to have people that are not developed intellectually. And some people will say, oh, but Bill Gates dropped out from school and he's a billionaire today. How many people dropped out from school? Mm -hmm. And how many became billionaires? For every one billion that became a millionaire, there are one million others that dropped out and became nobody, are begging and depending on their other on other people. The society we are here today, if you are not educated, you are disadvantaged. You are not educated, you are already three or four steps backward. So whatever you do in life, have the basic form of education and then have the appropriate training for your for your aspiration that you want to do. But don't ever subscribe to that school of thought. I don't need education. It may not be university education, and not everybody will be a university graduate, but everybody must have one form of education, which could be vocational training or otherwise. Otherwise, you will always be behind your peers in whatever choosing field. That, that you have chosen to go to. So that, that's the way I would balance uh, that question in agreement with uh, what Dr. Mayoko and Pastor Friday said. And now back to the question that uh, Raphael asked. So how do you build, uh, what did he say again? How do you build personal? Yes, it says, the question is like, how can you develop into creating a business for yourself as a people person? What are the things to consider when trying to build a brand for yourself? Okay, so I think those are two questions. How do you create a business for yourself yeah. as a people person? And then how do you build your personal brand? Uh, so I think building your personal brand will actually help you creating a business for yourself. 
Uh, so if you're a chemical engineer or you're whatever you are and you have a day job and you aspire to do something as in business. So the first thing, again, it comes back to your core. What do you desire? What what motivates you? Like what like what Pastor Lakers and as he said earlier, or what 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 drives you? What moves you? To be pussy and alcoholic person. Yeah. One thinks that person should go to jail. The other one thinks that person should actually. What can we do to rehabilitate the person? So you may be a chemical engineer, but there may be something that drives you. There may be a passion with you. I mean that 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 motivates you more. Then, then it's already showing the kind of business that you can go into. And so if you're a people person, and then you need to, to see, okay, what so to, to do a business, to do a business for yourself, what, what solution or what question am I trying to answer? What problem am I trying to solve? What solution do I want to provide? People that make money out of business are people that are bringing solution to a problem. So if you are from a third world country, what are the things going on in, in, in the country you are from? And how can I apply my skills, you know, to change that? I have friends, you know, that are into, in, into farming. I have friends that are into small scale industry. They said there is a problem of waste management in Nigeria. How do I manage waste? He saw that problem and this young man, well, I'm in a platform, in a platform, we call it the Rebuilders platform. And this young man, go and solve a problem with, with waste management and decided to go into that business, importing waste, getting gathering waste and converting it to something that can be processed and sold to people, making money. So if you're a people person, one is, in addition to your people person, where is your area of interest? And you need to ask yourself, what solution am I looking to bring? I, you can't just go into business for going into business. Sick. I'm not a I'm not a businessman, but I know for you to go into business, you must be looking to answer a pro. I mean, to answer a question, to provide a solution to a problem. It is providing solution. When Bill Gates started providing solution for IT issues, that's the way he made his money. And every time you provide a solution to a problem, money will follow it. So, what is your call? Who are you? What motivates you? What drives you? And what solution are you trying to provide? What problem are you trying to tackle? Having these three things in mind helps you to know how to build a business. Person. And I must say uh, that you can also have a consultancy as, mm -hmm. as a business that I'm going to, I don't, I'm not going to be producing this, I will just provide services to people. But before you get to that level of consultancy, then you need to have acquired some experience yes. because I will not come to you, you, you have you have never really worked in a, in a profession and you say you want to provide me advice on how to manage that profession. You don't have credibility. I will ask you, what is your credibility to come and advise me on how to manage people when you have never managed anybody? You know, so that's that, that we need to keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to personal branding, a personal branding is, is, is about who you are. It's about communicating to people about yourself. It's about developing a personality, uh, a personality that is, discover that is discoverable. People can easily discover it, that is shareable and that is memorable. So I have a part, and personal branding is what do you want people to know you about, to know, to know you for? How do you want people to relate with you? And it requires authenticity. So maybe you are working now. How, do, how does your co-workers, your colleagues, how do they remember you for? Do they remember you as a problem solver? Do they remember you as a tiebreaker? Do they remember you as a, 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 a solution provider? Or they, remember, they look at you and say, oh, this is a person that always brings the problem. He's always asking questions without providing the answer. Is that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are already creating a personal brand for yourself. So your personal brand comes from your daily interaction with people and being careful, carefully choosing how you want people to know you, what you want them to remember you for. And it's, a, and it's also about authenticity. How authentic are you in the way you deal with people? There are several ways of building personal brand. Uh, some is by you, you need an online presence and mm -hmm. you go online and you say, okay, this is the person I have. Yeah, good, okay. good, 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 showing forth exactly what you do and your passions. You know, exactly. the online presence is good. But then if it's online pre presence, then it must be memorable. Put something yes. that's memorable about it. If you look at the, the CEO of LinkedIn, 
you know, is such is, is such is, he has actually advanced in his career. But one of the things he does is that he, he posts regularly on LinkedIn. And one of his posting he did on LinkedIn was showing a career progress, how he actually got to become the CEO of LinkedIn. And when you read that profile, it's very relatable. You can see, oh, this is an ordinary person, everyday person that has achieved in life. It's authentic, relatable. And that is how, and so you, you feel connected to the person. That's how you build your personal brand. You are authentic, you are enthusiastic about what you do, and, and you put it online. People, you are, you are easily discoverable. People discover you. What you do is shareable. You share your work. You, are, you, you let people know, that, oh, I'm involved in this, I'm involved in that. And, and you, also what you do is, is memorable. If you look at somebody like Michelle Obama, she has created a personal brand for yeah. herself. Someone that is intelligent, someone that is articulate, someone that is a person of her own. That is what she has projected. So your personal brand is what you project to people. And sometimes people fake it, but ultimately people will discover who you are when they meet with you. So it's all again, it comes back to your core and who you are and how you present it to the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Pastor Wale. That's a very strong answer. Identify your unique selling point and find a problem to solve. Good one. Now, the next question, now, now, <laughs> the chat room is practically on fire right now. There's so many questions already, and we, we are pleading for you know some more time, and I think we, we have the permission to extend a little bit. If it's okay for all of our viewers, because I can see that people are, really, are still excited, continue with us. So we'll just take as many questions as possible in the next 20 or 30 minutes, maybe. The next question, we will go to our IT specialist, uh, Propita. Uh, Propita, are you ready for this one? It's something related. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, just just a minute. I'll, I'll get that out. Great. Now, I'll read from Ify. She says, some people work in a place just to get paid without necessarily growing career-wise in the company. How does one manage that, especially when there are limited opportunities? Also, I work for a software company and really do enjoy what I do a lot. However, deep down within, I know there might be no steady growth as the career path is not clear. Hmm. Hmm. That's that's interesting. Yes. So uh, I think the way I would approach that, I'll tell you my own story, and I would I will kind of give you like a practical note how you would do it. For me as well, when I started my career. I started as a QA intern. I actually, I, I was mainly want to go into software development because that was what I was passionate about. But I realized that, you know, during that time, you needed more experience to be able to be a software engineer. And QA uh, automation was a step that you can take to get there. So what I did was that I applied as a QA intern and that gave me enough time because then it was practically doing a routine job and I could do that with, you know, one eyes closed. So I was able to, you know, on my free time, you know, learn as a software engineer. I was sitting with the software engineers at, at work, asking questions from them, getting their knowledge. You know, I, I had the privilege to work with people who had decades of experience. And I was always inquisitive. And even when I was leaving the company, I got a lot of, you know, recommendations from, from them because I was always asking questions, you know, stupid questions, you know, whatever <laughs> question you have, I asked the questions. And mm -hmm. that gives me the, you know, the boldness to say that, okay, now I know one or two things about it and I could go home and read about it. And it's really, really important that you find that, that thing that you really enjoy, even while you are in your career, because that thing you enjoy, even though you don't get a promotion where you are, because there are some places there is no promotion. You know, you can never be a CEO when the CEO is there. If the CEO is the owner of the company, he can't promote you over him. So you might as well take the opportunity to learn what you can learn and then move on because at the end of the day, that's your job. It's not your, it's not, it's not your, you know, your final place, place of work. So you, you can, you can definitely move to another place. There are, you know, IT now is like the big odd cake. You can advance yes. your career from one company to another, and it's very important that you understand what God's purpose is for you, because when you find what you're doing and you're doing it well, people will recognize you. If the people at your workplace don't recognize you, people outside will recognize you because at some point, people outside will start seeing the reflection of what you are doing at your workplace. So never stop learning because you are not promoted because the, at the end of the day, the promotion is from you. Because if you can develop yourself, yes. people will see 
from your branding, probably you have a LinkedIn yeah. page or you have your own site where you're showcasing yourself. Companies will see you and they start calling you. Yeah. Myself now, I get lots of calls. Wow. Of course, you know, to come and do this, come and do that. And at the end of the day, you start having to make your own decision. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. Don't fix it, fix it on that, you know, getting promotion. What if God is telling you that that's not the place, that's not the next step for you? Mm. You know, key into the God's plan and let God direct your footstep. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just a quick follow-up to that question. If you could answer that this in one minute, because, you know, you mentioned while you were talking about the fact that there are now opportunities in the IT field, especially with COVID-19. And this conference also is aimed at post-COVID. How can the church, how can church people, how can youths, be relevant. People are saying, they are, oh, they are losing their jobs, some are crying. Can, can you just give a light into the fact that there are lots of opportunities in the IT world right now? Uh, it's, it's very interesting because if we look at the, the companies that are actually affected by COVID-19 now, are the companies that actually, you know, you know, you have to stop work because, you know, you are you, most, most of you are working in one place, probably factory mm -hmm. jobs, you have to stop some factory jobs. But you look at look at companies like Amazon because they have to, they, they are essential services. So they have to operate and the company is growing in, you know, exponentially. And that's that's a, 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 an indication that co com companies that are essential, companies like Amazon are hiring, even technology in Finland now we have even more technology jobs that are hiring at this point, even yeah. though it's COVID-19. So for you to make yourself relevant, never stop learning. Even yes. myself, myself, I think I'm taking like the third course now during COVID-19, wow. you know, and at the same time, I'm doing mentoring, you know, at the same time, I'm running my company, at the same time, I'm also taking care of my son. So there are things that you can you are doing, do. You are doing media, you are doing media for EU. EMBI. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, By you, your wife. you know, <laughs> I'm also being a, a good husband. So, so there, there are you have 24 hours in a day. There are a wow. lot of things you can do in 24 hours. And the wow. reality is that if you don't stop learning, you will continue growing. But the moment you stop learning, you know, there is something fascinating about IT is that if you stop learning something in one one week or two, you forget that thing. Mm. That's the reality. So you have to continue learning so that you don't become, you know, you don't become irrelevant. So you have yeah. to continue growing because yeah. if you stop growing, you start you start losing. I, I will stop you. Learning. I will stop you. I will stop you there now, bro, Peter. <laughs> I see you are excited about this IT thing. It's in your blood. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, sister, if sister, if, if you're hearing us, the, there's a lot. The horizon is massive for the IT industry. You are in software engineering. You are at the right place at the right time. I trust God that led you there right now. This season is for you. The opportunities. Keep learning. Like bro, uh, Peter has told us, don't stop learning. Keep satisfying yourself. Get the new certifications and keep learning new skills and definitely be amazed how God will promote you. Thank you so much. Sister Noni, I'm coming to you. Your turn. All right, there are two questions that will merge together to, for, for, for you. Um, uh, very interesting questions, all right? Uh, one person is saying, and I will merge both of them, that you, know, you talked about uh, blowing your trumpet in a very modest way. And the person is asking, how can you, you know, how, what's the difference between advertising yourself and being both? Question one, what's the difference, you know, how can you draw the line between advertising yourself and being prideful or boastful? And the second question I want you to merge, someone is asking you, you are in a predominantly male industry, all right? The automotive industry is predominantly male, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a, more like a male industry. How are you able to manage this, you know, and how do you manage issues sex-based discrimination and sexist comments and all the scenarios relating to all of this. Please, can you answer this question in two minutes? All right, Pastor Gaga, thank you very much. Just to clarify, I don't trust my internet. See, in case I'm shaky, just be patient with me. Um, for the first question, in terms of blowing your trumpet, I have to say, I was a victim of that. I always thought that uh, you shouldn't blow your trumpet, let your result just speak for yourself until one day I found myself in a meeting and somebody was describing what I did. And this job was not yet complete, it was still in the process. So I thought, okay, I need to finish from A to Z before I even let someone know where I've gotten to. I was so upset that the minute an opportunity came for a question on that, um, that particular issue, I didn't, I was no more quiet, more than still <laughs> out of the way. But what I would say is, don't ever let people, don't stay quiet so that people could take your, 
the share of what you your hard work. So that experience opened my eyes to learn to always uh, explain what I have accomplished and what is in progress. Right? I find that my colleagues are good at sharing the little bit they support somebody. I was only good at sharing what I have fully completed and only if I did it alone. And I realized, no, when I spend two hours and spend two hours of overtime unpaid helping somebody, that is also my own accomplishment. So when I go into the room and an issue rises up and I know the answer, I don't hesitate to tell you how to solve it. And of course, yes, there is place for you all to do it. But there is, um, there's timidness. There's a, a, a small line between being timid and being modest. And you need to bear that in your mind that whatever you've done and you've done it, it belongs to you. And you ought to be proud and celebrate yourself because only you will celebrate yourself. And if you don't do that, somebody else will take the glory for it. So learn to say what you've accomplished. Continue learning, and in that process, your opportunities will come that those things that you struggled with would then become even easier. And then suddenly, people will always come to you for that area. But if you don't say what you've accomplished, they'll always think it's the other person that did it, or just think your manager did it. It's good to have managers that always um, share the, the glory of what you did too. But when if you don't have that, it's fine. When you get the opportunity, speak out and tell people what you accomplished. And that will take that out, uh, easily take me to the male industry. When I started uh, in my bachelor courses and even masters, I used to have classes where I would be the only female. It didn't bother me a lot at all because um, I had brothers, so I saw guys as just about the same. But when I started working and I would go into meeting up or meeting, being colored, the only colored person became a norm for me, especially growing up in Europe. It didn't bother me, but being the mm. only female used to bother me because I would um, go into rooms and people would think, oh, I came to bring coffee or I was the cleaner and it irritated me more than anything else. But I learned one thing, your results will speak, mm. your, hard, your result, let your results speak for it. So we speak for you. See, wherever you find yourself, whether at the early stage of your career or middle stage of your career, always learn. Learn, have the, uh, the mentality that I want to be the go-to person. I have days when I'm on holiday or a day off and I have my phone ringing for my manager and I'm like, but I'm on holiday. He's like, yes, but I need your help because I became good at something that very few or no one else could do it. So I became the fixer. And maybe it's just a little, as a little aspect. And of course, I, I aspire to make it even more, make the least broader, um, the scope broader. But when you, be, when you become a master of something, mm. people always come to you. Mm. Second, do not be apologetic for who you are as a woman. Mm. Often in, in meetings, a guy would speak a certain way and people say, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. But when a girl, I see it all the time in my workplace, when another a lady speak exactly the same tone, she's bossy. So you have to learn to understand who you are and whom you are, right? Don't let people define you by your gender. Let God, let your definition come from the word of God and nothing more and nothing less. Of course, be open to constructive criticism and know when you are becoming really arrogant versus when you are being assertive. There is not, assertiveness Wait. is one primary uh, quality they're all looking for in your leadership. And as a woman, you have a place to be a leader in your workplace mm -hmm. and make sure that you've got the skills, the competency, and then everything will just flow. They will stop seeing you just as a girl and they'll start seeing you as a professional and mm. your respect will come naturally. You wow. have no choice. You have no choice. You just keep celebrating yourself, keep learning and be a master of what you've identified as your niche. Wow, wow, wow. And I think this also speaks to the, the issue of the Black Lives Matter movement going on globally today. You know, it's it's good to have all of these, you know, uh, things, all of these campaigns going on, but it's going to speak to ourselves that your results, no, nobody can argue with your results, whether you're black or white or whatever color, whether you're a woman or a man, this speaks to it. Let's keep increasing our value and God will always create a space for you. I tell people sometimes, 
find your place, fill your space, and run your race. Find your place, fill your space, and run your race. There's always a place for you. Bro, we am coming to you. It's, sorry, it's yeah, getting yeah, hot. Sorry, it's getting sorry, hot. Pass, yes, sir. Yeah, sorry. Before, just before you go, I just want to make a point uh, in relation with what you said and what Naya said about blowing your trumpet. And I think it's also, it's also cultural as well. Uh, coming from African background, uh, mm. when we we're growing up, it was drummed into us. Uh, humility, humility. Uh, you need to be humble. You don't ask questions from elderly people. You give respect and, and all those things. Now, most of us are living in Europe. I remember when I first got to Europe, I found it difficult to call my manager by name. Mm. My manager was Italian. In 2006, I was in Netherlands. And I said, sir, I said, I'm not sir, call me my name. My name is Massimo. Why do you call me Massimo? And I remember <laughs> before I go to him, I will have to rehearse in my head. Okay, he said I should call him Massimo. His name is Massimo, not sir. Because coming from Nigeria, I used to call him sir, Oga, and all those things. But you are in Europe, it is first name basis. When you are timid, it's not a sign of humility. Mm. They take, when you don't when you don't speak at the level where you are, they take it as if you 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 don't you don't know what you are doing. You are not knowledgeable. You are second class, and they will trash upon you. So you must know how to speak up for yourself. I know that you are no longer in Africa, but you are in Europe, and in Europe, Europe is is is, is an equality. Our society. Now you need to be careful because I've seen many, many of us coming from Africa and over adopting the European system and in the process of saying like I'm European, talking to peers or to seniors, you speak rudely. There is a way you can speak to your like boss you. without saying or gas and all those things and still be respectful without being without disrespecting this. So you need to manage the, to know that you're coming from Africa, but you are no longer going to be saying sir or God and do things like that. You, it's a first name basis. And then that also know, be mindful that you do not be disrespectful to them. I remember I was, I was, it was end of year, and my manager came and he was giving me feedback. He said, Well, you have done that was in my early years, 2007. He said, You have done excellent work in the year, but I am the only one that knows what you have done. Mm -hmm. No other managers in the department knows exactly what you have done. So when it gets to ranking session, because in Shell, they will rank you with what you have done, and the managers will sit down, and they'll be discussing, okay, this one I delivered, this one I delivered this, mm -hmm. and they will rank, okay, should we give him 1.5 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.5? And that determines your bonus and, and, and all the things. And my manager said that he's the only one that knows what I have done. My and he had to promptly defend me. He said to help him, help me. I also need to let other managers know what I'm doing. Even though I'm not working with them, you go out with coffee with them. You say, oh, can we have coffee? I just mm. want to get to know you. In the place of getting to know you, you are selling yourself. You're not looking for a job, but you keep selling yourself. It is career. It is, it is bureaucracy. And you need to work it. It is not spirituality. Go and pray and fast for three, 365 days a year. No promotion will come if you just do your job and you close yourself in a cocoon and don't interact with people. It's about personal branding. Reach out to your manager, to other departments, outside your own department. Just, it's, it's casually, they do it freely. The, the Europeans do it, the Americans do it. Completely irrelevant thing, they'll bring up what they are doing and let you know. And you start with a conversation. So find a way to reach out to people outside your department and let people know what you are doing. It is not pride. It is selling yourself because that is what it takes in this world you are in. Otherwise, you would do the work and somebody else will take the work. So please, let's take note of that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that addition. I've just been informed that we have to round up the sessions now because we are coming back for the general session in the evening. But we can take one or two questions because of time. For all those who have questions, and we can if not take your question today, like we said yesterday in the conference, we would have um, uh, a mentorship program. Our goal in EM Yaya is to raise the six o'clock Christian. I, I, I keep repeating this so that we, we get to understand the aim of all we're doing. This conference is structured to achieve that. Heavenly focused, six o'clock Christian, you have the one hand arm up and the other arm down. Heavenly focused and earthly relevant. So you, you can see our panelists here are people who are very much relevant in their different fields, doing exploits, and most importantly, loving God. 
you can be a six o'clock Christian. That's what we want to achieve for the youth in Europe, heavenly focused and relevant in your different countries. Africans should not be seen as only the cleaners or only the security guys. You can also be an expert. You can be a manager. You can rise to the top of your career. That's the aim of what we're doing here. We must rise together. Bro, Uyi, I want to come to you, Sadikin Uyi, uh, with this question, because I, I'm trying to ensure that every panelist is able to answer one question before we close. This is very important for you. Please, if you can keep it just two minutes, so that we can take one more question before we close today and come back for the last session tonight. Now, looking at your 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 um, your presentation, we can see your, the promotions, how God has helped you to move from one level to the next, from one level to the next, and you know you keep you you remain you know an asset to your to your company. The question is from Yvonne. Um, ways on how to obtain promotion at work. Have you not, have you achieved that? And also, how can one become an asset at work? Can you just answer this question in two minutes, please? Can you unmute your microphone, sir? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's a very complex question, but if you listen to what everybody has said, you will likely find your answer there, which is uh, starting with what Noye and um, Pastor Wale said, uh, which is humility isn't the same as cowardice. So we should not mistake humility for cowardice. Mm -hmm. And David um, uh, was the one that revealed his own CV when they were looking for who will kill Goliath, he said, I fought the lion and the bear. Nobody spoke about David. David spoke about himself and says, I will be the one to kill Goliath. Give me what I need and allow me to do this job. So he brought his own CV and he blew his own trumpet. So, so that, that, that takes it. And two, our relationship with people is very important. We need to always sow into people's lives and speak well when the opportunity comes, do our work with all the passion, and leave the promotion to God. Sometimes we hustle for things that will come to us. You cannot hustle out the rain from the cloud. From the cloud, You just do your best and position yourself, and the rain will come. So um, try not to be manipulative about promotion, but just be hardworking, patient, relevant, and available. I think that 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 should answer your question on promotion. Thank you. And then how to become an asset. That's the second part of the question, to become an asset in, at work. Just like what you will see with Wally's uh, career path, which is similar to mine, in the sense that you have to say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. And just like Prophet Isaiah used to say, here I am, send me. So you have to be available. I built myself as one who was able to do two jobs at a time. So while doing my full-time job, I will be on several committees. So even when I was doing all these things, I was in charge of sports for about six years for my organization. So I used to organize sporting activities, and I used to um, organize even oil industry games across the industry, not only within my organization. And sometimes I will have, and I was also an active member of the unions at certain times. Uh, so you have to have that. You have to show people that you have the capacity. When you have capacity, you have intelligence, and you have a drive, willingness, uh, and intelligence, everybody will always need you for one thing or the other. There was hardly a job I left that people did not ask me for things, ask me for support later, or did not want me to stay on to hmm. and be a problem solver. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's, that was... That was so, so much on point. Thank you so, so much. I am actually <laughs> um, Just to confused. Add, as someone how... asked a question uh, yeah. about being a chartered accountant. I okay, will maybe say you can speak to that quickly. Account. Yes, speak okay, to that being quickly. Being a chartered accountant, you have to ask yourself, where do you want to work? Okay. So the qualification you need to obtain, usually like accounting and law, in some cases medicine, require you to have uh, a certificate relevant for that country or that environment. So you will not always have, there are few certifications like um, ACCA in the UK that are applicable to more than one country. So you will have generic accounting qualifications, but if you want to succeed or excel in a particular country, you need to ask yourself, what is the qualification in that country? And then you have to be willing to study and abandon distractions like 
Instagram, Facebook, television, different things, mm -hmm. and put yourself into the study that it requires. Uh, every good food requires a sacrifice of planting. Thank you so, so much, Dikin Ui, for that. Now, this is the last question. There are so many questions. Please, I apologize to everyone. If we cannot take your question, we are, we do not have time anymore. I've been, we've been asked to already run up because we are coming back at 5 p.m. And we want everybody to, to relax a, li a little bit before we come back for the last session today. Uh, but I would, uh, this question is quite important for uh, a last session of those who are watching us right now. And I, I want us to take it before we go. Uh, I would ask Pastor Wally to speak, but I would ask Dr. Michael to say just one minute response to the question, and then Pastor Wally will wrap that question up. All right, Dr. Michael, just listen, and then Pastor Wally will wrap up the question, and then we can close for this session. How can a university student be relevant and work decent jobs that can allow them to study as well, rather than warehouse jobs or restaurants? What advice do you have for people who are in their 30s and are still trying to find an entry point to their career in Europe. I'll take it again. How can a university student be relevant and work decent jobs that can allow them to study as well as, as well rather than warehouse jobs or restaurants? What advice do you have for people who are in their 30s and are still trying to find an entry point to their career in Europe. So, Dr. Mike, over to you for two minutes, and then Pasquale will wrap this off, and then we can close the session. Okay, so very quickly, um, for the university students, I'll say that please make sure that you remember that the, the course that you're studying is your primary re responsibility there. So you, you you basically just need to assess the job that you're doing and see, is it going to distract from the primary reason why I'm in university, which is to study and to, and to gain the certificate that, that you want to that you want to gain. Um, gaining proper jobs in university is a bit hard because a lot of jobs, you need experience and you can't have experience without having, having the job first. So what I would say is, two things on that first of all don't um don't despise you know warehouse jobs or restaurant restaurant jobs there are things that you can learn from anything that you're doing any job that that you are doing joseph was on his way to be a prime minister yet he has to, he had to be in prison and even in prison he served diligently so whatever it is that you're doing no matter how menial the job is there is definitely something that you can learn from that another way is that if money is not an issue then offer your services how can you be how can you um how can you, you know, make a contribution? How can you be of value to somebody else? Offer your services, um, you know, as an internship, as an as an apprentice, um, and that way, you know, you get to learn from so many people, and you can use that as your experience, you know, then to apply for the jobs that they are actually looking for. For the um, people in their 30s who are still looking for a way to um, to break into Europe, um, I want to say that this is where it's very important to know the will of God for your life because some of us, a lot of us are it's not the will of God for us to be in Europe, and and that may be that may be why you haven't broken into into Europe yet, um, because God, the will of God for your life may actually be for you to make an impact where you are. I know it's a lot easier for somebody in Europe, you know, to say to say that, um, but know what the will of God is and the Lord will surely make a way if it's God's will for you not to be where you are, whatever your native country is. I'm sure probably the correct person is, is speaking about Nigeria, then God will will surely make a way. Um, but it's very, very important to do what it is that God wants you to do in that area first. Once you fulfill that, then God will, you know, open the door for the next stage in your life. So it's possible that God doesn't want you to be in Europe. God actually wants you to be where, where you are. It's also possible that you haven't finished what it is that your assignment is in that area that you are. So to seek the face of God as to what his actual will is for you. Thank you. And I think the person is talking about Europe because from the write-up, I think the person is already in Europe and is asking how they can enter. Yeah. So thank you so much. I think you want to say every, something? Every, I mean, yeah, just very quickly. Every um, for well, for medicine in particular, every country has their their specifications for um, you know what you need to do to, in order to be able to to work as a doctor in you know in a particular country. And each each country is different. So it's it's yeah. There's no there's no like long and short way of it. Figure out what it is that you have to do in order to to break into into your field. Unfortunately, for some people, it might mean having to start again because maybe you're mm. or um, 
the documenting your education, whatever you, you got from your university back home is not recognized. But if that's what you are called to do, you can't be lazy about it. You know, that, that's what you, your, your, your destiny is, that's what your purpose is. Do what it is that you need to do in order to get into that field. Thank you so much. You can't be lazy about it. I like that line. Pastor Walisa, can you just say something about this in two minutes and then we can close this session today? All right. Uh, so the, I think that the first one was uh, what can you do, student is student. So I perfectly agree with what uh, Maya Kwan said. It's very, very clear and concise. Uh, your primary reason why you are in school is to study. And if money is not a problem, uh, please don't distract yourself with the extra work. Although say I want to get money, go and you can offer your services, volunteer, and and just to to develop your skills. Because I think nowadays it's not just studying that matters, but also the experience that you have achieved along the way. In Shell, when they are recruiting for for entrance level, they know you've not had working experience, but in addition to your degree, they want to know what else have you done. So have you led a department? I mean, have you led your, your student union? Have you participated in the student organization? Have you volunteered to help the homeless? Have you done this? Or have, even, have you even worked in restaurants? Have you worked in McDonald's? They are, they are just looking for you to say that I have not done, I've not only studied, but I've also had time for other things. So there, for me, as a student, there is nothing like, this is a job, this is not a job. As long as it's not taking most of your time and you're not, it's not your primary focus, that it is good for your CV, whether you're working. I know people that were comfortable and see going to do a few hours in, in McDonald's, in, in, in a restaurant, uh, just to say, okay, I need some extra money of my own. And they put it there in their CV, okay, I've worked this, I've, I've provided services. So it is, there's is nothing wrong about it. If you want some more dignified job, so to say, because there's no job that is not dignified, there is no shame in labor. Uh, the only shameful labor is stealing. As you should have, you should have pride in, in the labor of your hand. Whatever you do, have pride in it. You know. So if if you say, okay, I want something apart from restaurants and like that, you can go to the library. You can volunteer in the library. Approach your department. They need a lab assistant. Do they need something to to, to to do? I mean, something to do office work. But as a student, be open-minded and be ready to take up. They, they are days of little beginning. So don't despise them. As long, if you need money and those ones will give you money, do it. Remember what Pastor uh, Friday said? He said his first year in university, photography was what paid his fees. True. You know, if he's feeling too big, I, said, I don't want to be snapping. Your mates are organizing party. You are the one that is that is the paparazzi for them. He said, no, I also want to be in the party. And then he will suffer, you know. But he dropped that, that, that pride and he, he was doing photography and he was making money. So use your skills that you have to get what... No, there is no shame in labor. That's, that's good for that. And then in terms of career, he said, well, I'm 30 and I'm yet to break through in my career. He said, the, the he that fails is he that stops trying. As long as you keep trying, you are not a failure. You may have faced every time, but you keep trying to do it. Uh, Lincoln, how many times did he try to become U.S. president? Only God knows the number of times that he kept failing. So he kept trying until he got it. Well, I've discouraged you. I said, oh, I'm not this age. I, I think I'm not fit to be president. So the first thing I want to say is don't give up. And then the second thing I would like to say is be ready and willing to, have to start little. Many of us, we don't want to start little. We don't want to have the days of little beginning. Uh, my uncle I'm talking about getting the required certification to your feet. If you, have, if you have all those things lined up, you're not getting it. Be willing to take a role that is a lower than what your profession is, than what you have, in, and just get in. And when you start, as you work and you do your personal branding, you are faithful, you are doing everything we've talked about earlier on, doors will be opened. I have found that when you are busy doing something, other doors begin to open for you. Even in the Bible, God never used men that are doing nothing. He used people that are already busy doing something to give them bigger assignment. And if you look at what I've said about my career, you look at what we have said about his career, we started little. I was a chemical engineer. I'm a chemical engineer when I, when I graduated, but I started in a bank. Some of us would say, no, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not going to do bank. But, but I went in 
because I know that was the job that was available at that time. I could have been home saying I'm looking for a chemical engineer job for years, but it's not coming. When I went in with in, into banking, and then I was acquiring marketing skills. That marketing skills took me to Cornell. I was still doing marketing with technical. I need to know technical. And that is what took me into Shell. So if I had been waiting to do chemical engineering job, maybe I would not have joined Shell. But it is the skills that I acquired in the banking industry and in the downstream industry that eventually took me to Shell to start working. So don't despise the days of little beginning. Sometimes it will take jobs that are not 100% in our line. But in doing that, you are developing yourself, you are keeping your mind enlightened and educated, and then you are still applying to those places to get you into your career. Some people, we, from day one, we go straight into their career and start building. Some of us, it's a zigzag. You go here, you go there, you go there, until eventually you learn to where God wants you to learn. To learn. But if you look back, you will discover that everything actually builds up. It adds up to whoever will be in the future. So don't despise it. And I saw someone also was asking about, oh, I've had two degrees. I'm still looking for it. For it. I've been applying. I've not gotten a job. I'm now I got an, an admission for MBA. Should I go for it or not? Why not? Why, if the job is still not coming, go for the MBA. In doing the MBA, keep applying. You may eventually get a job in the MBA, convert it to part-time MBA, and you, you are still doing it and you have the job, but don't sit down and say, I'm waiting for a job. I have an opportunity to improve myself. I'm, I'm not going to do it. And that also links to one of the things we've been talking about, which is about um, working in a place that is limited promotion and getting frustrated. Like, like uh, Peter said, your promotion is in your hand. Be faithful in that place where you are, and it seems that there's no end room for it. Keep developing yourself. When you become good at what you are doing, other people will call you to come and do the job you want. I was in Corn Oil. Corn, if you know Corn Oil, it's a one-man organization, and the career there is, is really limited. You can be in the same for years because there is not just a proper succession planning. I was doing Corn Oil, but I was very faithful in doing my job. In, in it, and I knew there is no career progression in this place. So I knew I was not going to belong in it. But whatever you find your hand doing, do it with the whole of your mind. I did it as if my whole life depended on it. And in the process of doing that, I got shell from Conway to shell, where there was no career progression, where there is no structure, to a place where there is superstructure, even to the international level. So wherever you are, it's not a limiting factor. Don't limit. Yourself. Don't say my life depends in this job. Oh, I must get promotion. No, promotion can be inside the company or outside the company. And staying, starting from UBA and rising to, H, to, to AGM in UBA. Yeah. Very they start UBA, they go to, to Standard Chartered, they come back to, to Equity, Heritage, and come back to UBA to become the, the assistant general manager of their field. So sometimes it is not a straight line, it's a zigzag. And just be willing and ready to be flexible. Have an open mind. And most importantly, trust God. Believe that my hands, my, my life is in the hands of God. And he's taking me in the path that he wants me to go. As long as we're not rigid and wow. flexible we will be able to reach our destiny. Well, we, we have to stop it there. Wow, P powerful, L loaded. We, this place is set, practically set on fire right now. But we have to close. We have to close. I'm sorry to say, but we just have to close. Thank you so, so much. I love the last thing Pastor Wally said. It's not always a straight line. It could be a zigzag from be flexible and allow God to move you where he wants you to move by time. Thank you to all our panelists. Thank you, Dr. Maya Kuhu. Thank you, uh, bro, Peter, our IT specialist. Thank you, Pastor Wally, for, for sharing your heart with us today. I'm sure you have a lot more to say, but time will fail us to take more. Bro, bro uh, Dikin Uyi, thank you so much, sir, for your your contributions and your answers to all the questions. Sister Nonye, amazing time with you today. God bless you. And bro, Friday, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, so what this subject said, an idea to me, Dr. Maya said an idea to me, and I think it's a good idea. We have to close now for this session. However, for all the questions that have not been answered, we'll do it this way. I would ask, first of all, I will ask my uh, project uh, program admin to get all the questions from YouTube and place here on the chat. 
what we'll do is we'll, once we go off live, um, we would ask the panelists to type in their answers to your questions. We will not close the Zoom completely immediately. We would allow the panelists to answer the questions on the chat much later, but we'll have to close officially on live. And then all those who have questions on YouTube, write your questions on YouTube. My, our program admin will, will get all the questions, extract them from YouTube and Facebook and get them on the Zoom. And then our panelists will answer them by chat. So if you want to remain here after what you can, but I will just have to close close it now. Now, I would, I would ask our technical admin to please share the link for uh, the general session at 5 p.m. CET, 5 p.m. CET, very important, 5 p.m. CET. Please do the conversion to whichever time zone you are. But at 5 p.m. CET, we are kickstarting the last session of Europe Mainland Young Adults and Youth Affairs e-conference 2020. You don't want to miss it. The end of a thing, the Bible says, is better than the beginning thereof. If you had missed Friday's session, no problem. If you missed the first session in the morning today, no problem. But please do not miss the last session. We, we have Pastor Ludoye coming. We have Pastor Dari Adeboye coming. We have choir sessions. We have an impartation session. It's going to be loaded. The, 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 the links will be shared. Please, i like our technical admin to please share the link, the Zoom link for the uh, the main session of 5 p.m. CET. Please share that link. We'll set, the links have been sent to your emails, but just in case you didn't get the links in your emails, you will get the links now. Save those links, and at 5 p.m. CET, we want to see you. All right? Now, very important also is that we have a mentorship program. In the general session, we're going to share uh, a questionnaire or a form, you know, because some of these things you are saying now, I think you need mentorship for a long time over. We have professionals who will mentor you in spiritual issues, in career, and all of this. You can ask questions. So at the general session, we would share a form, a, a, a form for mentorship. If you are interested, fill in that form, mentorship and counseling. And after the conference, it's a long-term thing. We would assign you to a mentor who would follow you, you know, for years as long as God helps them to ensure that you achieve that goal. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. To everyone watching us on YouTube, God bless you, we have to go off now. On Facebook, thank you, we have to go off now. Thank you to all our panelists and thank you to everyone uh, who's watching us. We'll go offline now and please, the panelists can, uh, you know, answer the questions by chat and then we can, you know, uh, we'll meet at 5 p.m. CET. But there's one question I thought I spotted. I don't know if maybe Pastor Walio, the con EU could take it. However, it's not specific. It says, can someone highlight enlighten me on financial plan? So I don't know if it's a personal financial plan or in terms of investing or in, um, in general, but it's specifically on financial plan. Perhaps the person wants to grow their financial uh, portfolio or so, something in that nature. So I guess, more than one person can answer it by typing an answer. Yes, just type in the answer on the Q&A uh, session mm -hmm. to that. And hopefully the person is online and he can also see the answers. Is that hopefully? Um, the last question is also directed to Pastor Wale. How do you manage the family considering your profession and pastoral um, work and also with your wife as a profession as a professional as well uh, it, it's, it's all about the wife if she's not understanding you're in serious trouble <laughs> <laughs> so, well, in, in case the person is not like is it maybe, um, um i think you can answer it in audio then we're going to edit it and put it on instagram live and then at the same time if you could answer by typing the answer on if you click type answer as well. So are you able to do both, please? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, okay, let me, so I, can, I should answer in audio first. Hopefully yes. the person is still, is still all, online. So how do okay. you manage family, considering your professional and pastoral care and also with your wife as a professional? So once, first, I think it's, it, it's about God's grace. Uh, God has been faithful and without him, he can do nothing. I said, with me, you can do all things. I can do all things through him that strengthens me. So that's the spiritual part. Now, the physical part is, honestly, it, it, it's very important to marry uh, your soulmate and the person that believes in your vision and the person that you are compatible and you can actually work together. 
uh, because there is no way you will be involved in so many things that if care is not taken, the family will suffer. And, and God has really helped us. My wife, she's an extraordinary, ordinary person. And she has a, a huge, huge capacity. And so when I'm out doing ministry or traveling with job or busy with the, with the youth work, uh, she's been the, the rock behind for, for the family, you know, taking care of the girls and, and giving me the support that is needed. And when she needs to go for ministration and things like that, I've gladly stayed back, you know, and, and take care of, of, of the girls. So when I'm, when I'm home, I try to make sure I give in as much as, 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 as possible. And I, it's about living, the, living in the moment, you know. So when it is time to work, I work with the whole of my mind as if that's the only thing. I need to do. When I'm in church, I do, I put in my best as if that's the whole thing I need to do. And when I'm at home, I try to put in my best. I cook in my house. I cook, I do cooking, I do cleaning, I, I look after the, uh, the kids when it's necessary. So then I tell my wife, don't worry, I'm going to do this. You know? So you, it, it takes a lot of time. And so you, you can't be lazy. You, 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 are, you are stretched. You, need, you must be able to know how to stretch and, and apply yourself to so many things, so it's 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 really being 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 flexible and, and 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 putting in your best, but most especially having a partner that is very understanding. If your partner is not understanding and supportive, you will be in serious trouble. One thing we have to drop out. But if you have a supportive partner, a wife or husband that believes in the vision and they are working to, together to build that vision, then it makes it a lot easier to get things done. So that's the way I will actually actually put it. A number of times, uh, maybe I sleep three, four hours a day. Uh, some nights I don't even get to sleep. I just close my eyes for one hour and I'm up and then I go do some other thing. Then I take a break. Uh, I find time to take a break and then you unwind and you go back again. So I think it also takes planning. And when it again, when it is your passion, it is not a burden. When it's your passion, it's not a body. So that energy comes from being the father. You love doing it. Instead of taking energy, it actually gives you energy. Uh, so when uh, I'm, I'm with the youth, I can I can stay up all night because it's not taking energy from me. It's, it's uh, getting energy from it. Though naturally speaking, you get tired. But what I mean is that the fact that you're doing it, it you, are, you are excited. It, it draws adrenaline in you. Uh, when, when I'm at work, it's what I love to do. So I keep going and I keep going. I want to do something. Ex Again, it's your motor in life, what drives you. Whatever you do, I want it to be done excellently well. So that means you need to spend time. And because it is my passion, I, I'm not spent. I just I just keep going. I don't know how it, it happens, but I keep going. But when it's your passion, it doesn't take away from you. You actually draw energy uh, from it. But it, it needs uh, to be able to balance all this. You need a very supportive wife or husband, as the case may be. Yeah. Just to so, add, just to add to what uh, Pastor Wale said, one thing that um, I always try to do is to create a create something within my job that makes it exciting. You, a lot of times, the onus lies on us to make that job interesting find a formula within the job that makes it work that makes it exciting and then make the so that the job begins to look like a life and less of stress so and you can see um you can hear from noye's testimony that her job begins to become part of her there's a way you will make the job part of you there's a way you make the job you'll find formulas within the job to make it interesting for you and then it will be less of pressure less of load I remember when I started working with the children's church, I had to find a formula to make it exciting, to make it something to look forward to. But if I was to look at it at first sight, it was like chasing one child the whole day and I was tired. So I needed to find a way to love chasing children around. And it worked for me with every task I did. I attended an interview much earlier in my career and they told me that the job did not look as exciting as the jobs I was doing but it was going to give me like 50% pay rise. Of course, it was exciting in my mind. So I said that every job, <laughs> every job depends on how you treat it. I said, if you give me a job to stack newspapers, 
I will come today. I will stack them according to date. Tomorrow, I'll stack them according to color. Next tomorrow, I'll stack them according to shape, according to height. I will get a stopwatch and time my stacking and time my own stacking and do a chart on my stacking process. So even stacking, describing stacking newspapers became interesting for the panelists. So but it's really, but somebody else will say, the job is just stacking newspapers. And that sounds boring. Oh, Pastor Daka, is still here with us? Okay. I, I think you left. Okay, I think um, there's another question. I, I'm at the back end. I'm doing something. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 You, can go, you can go ahead to answer the questions. Backyard business. I see people, right. still, people are still wait, willing to, to get answers to the question. So please, okay. please answer them, please. There's a question um, to the mic, Dr. Mike could um, posted. I don't know where she got the question from, but it says, um, good afternoon, great session here. You are all amazing at your fields. Uh, I think Dikonu, you just touched on that question. Said, did you all know your passion from the set on go or was it just experimental you discovered it? Um, I have studied and I'm working, but this area don't bring me joy despite being good, um, being good in the position. When do I stop searching and settle on one area and develop it. Mm. Oh, I would I like to touch just a little bit on this part for a few minutes and then someone else can go on. Um, when I started my degree, I had this mindset I wanted to work in oil and gas out of influence. However, um, in my, my second year, I realized that when my friends would go clubbing or go out, I will spend most of my evening looking at what was the latest release from Geneva Motor Auto Show or what was the latest release from Detroit Motor Show? I didn't realize that I had a craving for concept cars, new technology. But as time went on, I realized it wasn't just the car, it was the technology behind the car. It was the excitement of seeing how technology enhances people's life. And I, I, I hooked up to that. So even in my workplace, when I was not working in automotive, I, I would focus on the technology aspect because I derived joy from it. And I continued building on until just going back to master's again. I went back to master's, not with the hope to go into automotive, but I did an elective and I realized that, oh, I didn't have to, I, I don't need a degree in automotive to work in automotive. I just need to have a skill set that can solve their problem. So if you know your passion, develop, if you identify your passion uh, down the line, there's nothing wrong with changing industry as long as you have uh, you, you keep developing on a skill set or a competency so that you don't look like a generalist or a jack of all trade. At the same time, you have to be careful how you hop around. Develop a, um, a, a niche for yourself in that, in that process. So what I realized that I really wanted to work in automotive just because I, f I felt like it would be nice to do something I, I fancied as a hobby. But in order to get in, I realized that I had so many tran transferable skills from seven in the youth, I was project management and also had system engineering knowledge and automotive was uh, going towards more technology and my background in ele electronics meant that it fitted at it, a good timing with automotive. And that's how I was able to get into the industry. But I didn't stay and decided, I, while I was waiting for the automotive industry, I was still applying in other industries where my skills were needed, knowing that whatever, wherever I find myself in that industry, that I'll find something, whether it's the passion for to automating things and making them more optimal, I'll find something to make that job fun for myself. So that is my take on that part in terms of um, allowing, um, did you allow your passion or was it uh, experimental as well? Yeah, so I think I could also say a little, little thing in addition to what my sister just mentioned. I think for me, my passion was to play football. Like I love playing football with, you know, I, I, I enjoy doing it and you know, and I realized that while I was studying, I could play football. So I, I decided to, you know, join a football club. I was playing football while I was studying. And then I realized that this football would not feed me, you know. 
I knew I knew how to use computer because I was I was privileged to have the opportunity to you know be, uh, get familiar with computer when I was when I was still in high school. So I knew I was good at that. So I knew that I can get a career in this because football career we all know it's very competitive. Every, every one of us we see all these big players now, but there are lots of big players that never made it. And you know, so I realized that this this computer computer thing is something I'm so passionate about. So I started with something that it's easier. Uh, entry for me and I started developing passion you know I didn't from day one I didn't like uh, doing uh, programming of uh, uh, you know in the IT field I enjoyed you know I was I started actually with you know networking but I realized that networking has to do with repeated uh, tasks so I decided that okay I think let me go into programming and I actually developed the interest or, you know, of, of, of doing that and also, you know, develop the interest of learning because I realized that I have to continually develop myself to be better at this thing. So most of the time, you know, when, when you realize that you, that you don't enjoy what you're doing, what you really enjoy doing, have a plan of how you can put that in line and how can that stuff, you know, feed you in what you're doing. Because that's very, very important to understand that. Because if you are doing your passion and your passion doesn't feed you, it's, you know, you, at some point your passion becomes frustration to you. So understand that while you're doing the things that you don't really enjoy, do it diligently while you are you know, building the plans of the things that you really enjoy. Because they, this life, there's a lot, a lot of faces. You can transition from what, you, what you're doing now to something you really enjoy. You know, and that's also speak for my own career as well. Now I'm actually doing my own company because I realized that if you're working for someone, you are limited to what they can do. They decide for their company. So if you want to make decision, you know, in, and change people's life, start your own company, you know, and then try to see how you can merge all this together in a path that, you know, and like I said, trust in God. Trusting in God is very, very key, very, very important as well. You know, let him guide your footsteps. You know, the thing that you say you don't enjoy might be the thing that can actually, you know, propel you to the things that you really want to do. Wow. Thank you so much, for, um, Brother Peter. Because we have more questions, I, I want to read the next one. So that maybe someone else can touch on this. Um, Sir Mike also posted this one. He says, thank you very much. I aspire to work with United Nations. I'm currently studying for my master's and upgrading myself with skills. The issue is, when I have interacted interaction with people, they say to get a job in there, one needs to know an insider for recommendation. Is there ways networking comes in? And is the perception true that one must know someone who works in an organization to get in there? Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I can say something up to, 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 to this. Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, never allow what people say only determines what you do. Uh, because people will say things based on their own experience. And their own experience does not necessarily mean uh, that is the standard of what you yourself will experience. So when I was with Conrad, everybody said to get into Shell, you need to know somebody. If somebody does not help you, you will not get in. When I was going to get into Shell, I saw the advert in the newspaper, Tuesday Guardian. For those of us in Nigeria at those times, Tuesday Guardian is the, is the newspaper to go to that advertises job. I saw the job advertised in the newspaper. I did not know anybody in Shell. I applied for it. And they called me for tests. I did a test. I passed. I did interview. I did medicals and I entered. I did not know anybody. All my jobs that I have done, I have seen them either in the newspaper. When I got standard trust bank job, it was in the newspaper. Conroy job was in the newspaper. Shell was in the newspaper. Uh, Kata Petroleum was online. I did not know anybody except for Kata Petroleum. I have a friend that told me to also apply for this one, but that was that was it. You know, So I, the jobs I have done are things that I have seen and I just applied for. So that's one. And then two, it's good to know someone. The person you know may or may not be able to impact, but in places like United Nations, it's good if you have somebody that you know. But if you don't know anybody, then it doesn't matter. That, it doesn't mean that you should now stop trying because for every person that gets in by knowing someone, there are two or three people that got in without knowing anybody because it is not possible for everybody to know someone to get in. 
So you need to believe in yourself. You need to trust God and you need to keep doing what you need, what you ought to do, right? Developing yourself, getting the experiences and keep applying to them. You may not get in with what you really wanted, but just get in and then you can you can you know move on to what you really want to do. I know someone when I was in the Netherlands that got to United Nations, got the job with United Nations. She started like a secretary, like a secretarial job, way, way below her qualifications. But she just wanted something to do something. And she took she got in a secretarial job today. She's actually doing what she was qualified to do on a professional level. Uh, so I will emphasize again, networking is extremely important. Who do you know? Getting connecting with people, busy people on LinkedIn, sharing ideas, um, uh, 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 nurturing relationships with people is one. But it's not all networking that will get all networking that will get you into the job that you want. So take away that mentality. Unless I know somebody, I will not get it. Keep trying until, and if God wills, it will open the door for you. But don't really limit yourself that I must know somebody before I get there. That's what I would say to that. Um, just to add one line to what Pastor Wally has said regarding United Nations. Um, com uh, companies like United Nations, if you look at their job ad, you find that there's something unique about it. They often look for people that are bilingual. So, and you find it, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that if you can, you know, bilingual is in completely impossible, but it's an added advantage. So why you in why you still desire this dream for United Nations? Look at their job at um, their job at identify your gaps and keep building skills in that area. If your gaps is learning new languages, challenge yourself, take it on. In terms of networking, um, we live in a, a digital world. I had a few years ago, someone contacted me because she was going for an interview for a job I once I once had, and she asked me. Um, and would I mind giving her tips for interview? I remember I, I got so excited once she was a female and being in uh, in a male dominated environment, you get really excited when you see another female wanting to get in. I, I wrote all the um, interview questions I could think of and that I, I went through and gave her answers and tips. A week later, she came back to me and told me that she got the job. And we still have never met each other till date and we still keep in touch. But the thing is, don't be afraid to do cold calling. Look for someone that have that similar job that you want or in that organization in United Nations. If you uh, if you uh, find the right tool of approaching them on LinkedIn without bombarding them with questions, just pray for the grace of God that your answer will be your question will be the right question that they'll be willing to open. If you send to hundred, rest assured at least one will reply. And just build that network. It's not until you know someone, you have a LinkedIn account that already opens it to billions of people to start searching through and find the one that is willing. It could also be one that was no longer United Nations. I was no longer with this particular com company when this lady reached out to me. Look for people that may have gone through United Nations, ask them for tips on what was their, their career experience there, what can should you look out for in order to build your career portfolio. To get into that your desire uh, organization. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I'm sorry, we, we need to end it <laughs> compulsorily yeah. right now because I've been asked to just plead with us to end so that people can also rest and come back in the evening. And but what we are doing is um, thank you very much, uh, bro. Peter has shared the mentorship form. We, I just spoke to Pastor Biodu and we have a mentorship form already prepared. We will share it in a general session this evening because there are lots of questions. We cannot exhaust them today. People really uh, uh, know, know a lot of things from all of us. So please, uh, if you're still right now connected, the link is there for the mentorship program where you can be directed or merged with a mentor in a different area that you, you you're of your interest so you can fill the form right now however the form will still be shared in the general session this evening which is the last session please everyone make sure you fill this in we have our young leaders in the ema that are loaded you know loaded spiritually loaded in their career loaded in business and they can be a blessing to you you need a mentor so please I, I, plead, I want to plead with everybody that please we have to close it now. We have to end it now. 
5 p.m. CET. We are back with the general session link. Thank you so much, Pastor Wally, for remaining there. Even though we had finished, thank you, Stan. Thank you, every one of you, for remaining there, answering these questions. We are very grateful. Thank you so much, and see you all at 5 p.m. CET. Bye for now.